Welcome to Stampscaping 101. We're going to try something with a set of alcohol markers here. Okay, so um, with a lot of my tones and different media, I don't have enough brown tones. And I thought skin tone markers, you know, because there's a lot of these natural kind of brownish tones in here. Not really so much for the peachish, you know, flesh colored ones, you know, like that type of color. But all these other colors can be kind of utilized in natural settings, right? Um, so let's see what those look like here. Uh, with the form of tree trunks. Okay, I'm gonna use the larger pieces. I was just looking around for a scrap of paper. Oops. I just re-inked my black, mar uh, black pad and uh, I splattered all over the place because the pad was like on its last few drops and I squeezed down and it's like, you know, splattering. So anyways, we'll just use the back of the paper here. I could use the front of it. It's going to get filled in with um, a lot of different imagery anyway. All right, so I'm going with dye-based inks here because if you're coloring with the alcohol markers, you don't want the, you know, like a stays on or something like that to, you know, totally smear all over the place. All right, so I'm going to try to create um, a fairly dense array cluster of trees here. All right. Tree trunk trio there. We'll go with the larger tree trunk over on this side. I won't have very much space there unless I overlap, which I don't want to do. And so I, I don't know if I mentioned, but this was just a piece of scrap here. I don't even know the dimensions um, of this piece of paper, but again, it is a semi-gloss cardstock. Okay, so a little bit um, coated, but not as full as like a glossy. So it's kind of in the middle. You get to utilize things like colored pencils on there if you want to. And um, there's enough, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call this paper textured at all, but there's enough tooth to it, meaning texture, for things like colored pencils to grab onto. It's not so sealed off like a glossy cardstock. But I, you know, we could have used a glossy card stock on this one if we wanted to. I just wanted to leave things a little bit open if I wanted to add in some colored pencils or some media like that. I want to do this one fairly bold though. Um, we'll see how it goes here. Okay, so uh, this is the tree trunk just on both sides, the larger one. This is a nine inch tall art foamy stamp, like super fun to use. Um, and here is the smaller one right here, and I'll use this in the background. If you can do these, um, you can use your um, Stampscapes rubber, you know, stamps too for this scene. You know, it's not going to, you know, flank off the scene, but just adjust the size of your piece, you know, go like a half page or something like that instead of, oh, I don't know how tall this pieces right here, but it's pretty tall. Uh, relatively speaking, in terms of card making, I wouldn't call this a card so much anymore. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of big for that, but anyway. Okay, so that is um, our foundation right in here, and let's do a fairly bright you know, um, forest floor in here. Brightness doesn't mean lightness, though. Brightness just means, um, you know, the amount of kind of relative saturation and intensity of your colors. So in the shadows, I can have like a bright but dark green or something of that sort. Lightness is a matter of light and dark. Brightness is a matter of dull and intense, okay? All right, so I am going to utilize my Sedge filler stamp, okay. And this is a, a dark green here, okay. And I'll put in some dark green. I'm going right over my um, trees. You don't have to really work around them. Yeah, you'll, you'll get some of this green, you know, texture in, uh, in your trees, but it's not really going to matter, right? Because we're going to fill in with our additional 
um, colors and tones, and inevitably there will probably be some greens in there. So it is absolutely fine to harmonize. I mean, there's certain types of images. Like, I don't want to put this, like, bush in the background or something like that, and it's showing up in the foreground, you know, or something like that. But this light texture of the sedge filler, it's just fine to use it over everything. It's not like, oh my god, I could see, you know, like, some of that grain from right there in here. You know, it's it's practically invisible. You know, I'm not going to put, you know these wolves running in the background and just stamp them right over this because they'll show right through the tree because they're too solid. So textural stamps, not a problem. Okay, so that being said, let's add some additional textures down here in the form of the uh, tiny rocks small. It just varies the texture a little bit. Uh, just so it's not so monotonous and it makes the uh, you know the forest floor that much richer as a result. Okay, um, let's let that dye-based ink of the uh, trees dry a little bit more. Uh, let's go and start coloring this forest floor a little bit. I think I want to add in some, I don't know, some like wildflowers into this um, forest floor. I'm not quite sure what. Oh, excuse me. I just remembered. I wanted to use my mushrooms stamp. Let's go see where it is. And let's add some of those into this forest floor area. Okay, I have my mushrooms here. Let's add some of these down in the forest floor. Let's see, I'll mask off a little bit here. Or you can also just kind of wipe off the bottom a little bit. I've made the design where, you know, you don't really have to mask off, but I really want to vary the, uh, the look of the impressions from impression to impression, just so it doesn't look so monotonous. So you can see I've, I've just used the top of it right here, and we go like that. This one's going into that one a little bit more. So we have that. I was just thinking about putting one in here, but maybe that'd be a little bit too much. We have a little bit of a window. I'll probably put something in there um, in the end. Okay, so while I've been sitting here blabbing away, um, hopefully this ink has been um, drying and sufficiently dried. It could be a touch on the wet side still, so um, I'll be a little bit careful about it, but I don't think I'll need to worry about it too much. Although I just did re-ink that black pad, so we'll see. Okay, so these are going to take me through some of my lighter tones, okay? Looking at it now. They might dry a little bit, or they might apply a little bit darker than what they seem, but we'll see. Okay, so I'm going to work through um, kind of a value scale of uh, light to darker, okay? And also, we'll look to um, kind of blend these tones a little bit more. Okay, so there's a nice brush tip there, and this one's a chisel tip. I'm going to use the chisel tip because it's going to give me more coverage, especially with my lighter tones. Okay, that looks pretty good. My ink is a touch... Um, wet, my black ink, okay? So this is picking up some of that black and smearing it out a little bit, but that doesn't matter because I'm going to be blending a lot of other colors into this anyway, and it's supposed to get darker anyway, so you can see it like that. It's a little bit 
murky like that, okay? Now this is my lightest tone, so I'm just kind of doing um, a pretty full coverage of it. I'll vary my application um, when I get into some of the darker tones, although this with the black is serving um, as if it is kind of a darker color like that. It's like, you know, whatever color this is with black added to it. So I have that laid out in there. See, this one I added a little bit more on the left-hand side because I'm going to have this uh, right side of the tree illuminated a little bit more. Okay, let's move on from the chisel. Let's move into the lighter one right here. My green kind of uh, merges with the uh, color a little bit too. Now, I, I mean, I could have let this dry, but I, you know, I didn't want to wait for too long, or I, I didn't feel like heat setting or something like that, so I'm not going to. Okay, so I perceive that to be one of the lighter colors. Actually, this one's... Yeah, it's not too different. Let's go ahead and use this one as another base layer coat. Let's see what it looks like. A little bit warmer. I won't do um, like a complete coverage of this one, okay? I'm going to use it, I think, a little bit more on the uh, left-hand side of the left trees, and I'll go more right side with the right-hand trees. I'm going to have my source of light coming from kind of this area in here. So these are skin tones, but you know, <laughs> I'm coloring the bark. That's kind of like the, uh, you know, that's kind of the skin of the tree. Okay, let's see here. Let's take a look and see what color that is. A little bit more yellowish tinge, like a kind of a like a mustardy tone. Let's add a little bit of warmth in here, like this. Okay, it kind of warms up the, uh, the piece, doesn't it? So what we're doing is we're laying down transparent layers of color, because we want these, you know, these tree trunks to be nice and rich and deep, okay? That's how you achieve it. You achieve it with multiple layers of transparent hue, if you're using transparent hue, um, alcohol markers, dye-based markers. Um, sometimes people might think, when they're thinking about something to color, they might think, okay, let me find a tree trunk brown. And then they just use that one tone or like grass green or something like that. So it's this one value, one um, intensity, and one hue all together, okay? And you can do things that way, but it tends to ma make the objects look more flat like that, okay? So when you layer things down, you blend things, and you have variation happening throughout the piece, it lends itself to kind of a little bit of a richer looking surface um, in the end result. All right, now this color is, uh, let's see. Yeah, it's like a little bit of a warmer version of a couple of these, but not quite as yellowy as the 
I don't know, that mustard looking uh, one. <clears throat> okay, I'm going for a little bit more tone down at the base here. Okay, but look at those trees. They look pretty rich um, with with hue and texture. So there's different variations that are happening in there. Um, and it's not much of one color. Okay, it's just a, it's a multiple, it's multiple uh, what values of uh, tones and related tones too. Let's see. I rarely ever use these chisel side, you know, tips of my markers, but it's working out pretty good in terms of just getting a really fast amount of coverage on these large objects. You don't have to be like an expert at blending or anything like that because we're not coloring kind of a... We're coloring over textures, so it's like you can't even really see, so... You know, you don't even have to bother trying to get things, you know, like super smooth. Plus, I think the textures kind of lend themselves to, you know, kind of tree trunk uh, types of textures anyways. Okay, now let's get some um, foundation going with some of these tones in here. Um, looks like there's a blender pen too. I don't know if I'll be using that, but... Let's go for a couple of these nice um, light tones like this. And then I'll fill in, I think, with other kind of grass greens in there. Maybe I'll use um, some uh, um, colored pencils or something like that. Okay, so this is, oh, this is a warm gray, believe it or not. Well, they're definitely talking about kind of a, you know, a warm, you know, high on warm and low on kind of a, a neutral gray at least, okay. All right, now this is picking up some of that green, but maybe all the better in this case. Now I'm gonna leave some of this area in here a little bit, um, Just, you know, just uh, the white of the paper, okay? And I'll do it through this opening right here because I'll kind of try to uh, create this illusion of um, lighting coming through the trees in that space. Take some of this green here that's on your pen, mix in and come, come up into your tree trunks a little bit like this and introduce some of that green into there. That, that way there's not this um, kind of separation. You can bring some of that, you know, color of the trees down into the grass too and just kind of spread it around down here. See, I'm coming up like this and I'm coming down like this. Okay, that was a warm gray. Um, Let's see, this one is a partial peach. It's a little bit of a warmer tinge down there. Maybe I can go even warmer. warmer <laughs> I'm not gonna bring that down too far I'll, I'll blend it in a little bit more with uh, my colored pencils all right so let's get a few colored pencils and let's do it in a, a range of values here we have kind of a light medium and darker green I don't know if this is medium, but it's medium between these two at least. Okay, now what I'm going to 
do, let's see. I'm trying to decide if I, I think I'll, if I put anything in here, I'll put it up on the horizon. Uh, because anything I want to stamp out here with dye-based inks, it's a better idea to do it right now than after you did lay down colored pencils, you know, um, this waxy colored pencil. Um, you know, water-based impressions might not stick to it very well. Okay, now the alcohol inks also change the, uh, you know, the surface characteristic of the paper. So you might not get you know, certain um, colored pencils adhering or, you know, transferring and applying over the top of your alcohol inks very well. Sometimes it could be good. It's like working as a resist, but like as I go over these mushrooms, <laughs> mushrooms are only taking, you know, this, um, you know, light green colored pencil very well. You know, it's because the alcohol is sitting on the surface of the paper. It's very smooth and shiny, and it kind of seals the paper off, so. But yeah, I mean, you can put some of it down over the top of it. But I'm just saying that just so, you know, when you start using the colored pencils, if you haven't used them over alcohol links before, you won't be, uh, like, shocked. Like, oh my god, this, you know, this isn't going on like it does on, you know, like a, just straight matte card stock or something of that sort. Okay, so see how I'm kind of, you know, utilizing a little bit of that lighting in here. It kind of went darker over here and going darker over here. So a little bit of light in here. Okay, so dark green here. These are Prismacolors, so they're a little bit softer than, you know, certain brands of uh, colored pencils. So you know, like colored pencil artists, they seem to like certain types of characteristics. Some of them like it a little bit um, harder and some like more of the buttery feel of like Prismacolors or something like that. Me, I don't know. I don't really, you know, have a preference. I haven't been using colored pencils for too long. These just happen to be the ones that I bought years ago and I'm still using them. putting my uh, darker tones right at the base of a lot of these trees here. So so it looks like they're casting, you know, a bit of a shadow in there. Let's see. Here's another green. It's a little bit more of a, like a forest green. Let's use some of that. Those pens kind of, those bold pens pretty much make, you know, make pretty quick work of you know, kind of establishing your colors. I'm going to put a little bit of this green onto these trees just to give it a little bit of a color continuity. I mean, it doesn't read as green, but it just gives a little touch or tinge of this green over the top of, uh, you know, these colored pencils here. It, it makes them yeah, you know, the objects seem a little bit more related if you kind of intermix um, some of the hue uh, together. That's why some of the tree hue is down in the grass, too. Okay, um, let's add in... Trying to decide what to add in here. I might add in like some pine bows or something like that. I haven't used those in a while. And I want to get a little bit of extra texturing in, in here too. So let's do that. Let's bring in, let's see, what color should I add down here? Add in some white. Now, I've been doing these like bluebell, kind of explosive bluebell um, elements in my pieces. Lately, I got kind of went on a bluebell kick where there's like big fields of pink within here. I think maybe I'll add some in here, but I'll do it in a more kind of a, a minimal way. Okay. But first, let's add in a few extra tones. Oops. 
brand new pen here. Let's get this flowing. Be sure and shake up your acrylic paint pens adequately before use every time. All right, so this is a little bit of a, you know, it's like a pastel green or something. And let's add in some additional textures within our grassy area. I'm kind of adding it in an area where these dots really don't stand out, but from a textural, they don't stand out from a color, you know, standpoint because they're this, about the same value as the greens that I'm applying them on top of, okay? But then I'll kind of creep them out into the darker area a little bit. And then you'll see a little bit of a lighter green on the top of a darker green. But it doesn't really stand out very much here, okay? And that, you know, I'm doing, I want that purpose, you know, I'm doing that purposefully, okay? Because I want it to harmonize in with here. I don't want it to look like, oh my God, there's like a completely different um, type of texture in there that doesn't look related, okay? We want it to stand out, but we want it to relate to. Okay, so here comes the lighter green. Okay, so the lighter green, I might be able to use it in a lighter area, but maybe I don't go into the shadows quite as much with it, okay? I mean, there's different approaches with this, and you know, and different philosophies in terms of like uh, color and textural integration. Okay, so it's like one way isn't like the only way to uh, do uh, something like this. Okay, so there are the green tones. It just kind of integrates in with the rest of the forest floor. Hopefully, it looks like a nice, rich forest floor. You know, the stars of the scene right now are the trees, so we're trying to give some visual interest into the forest floor area. Um, you know, but harmonize with it too, um, from a textural standpoint or color standpoint. I have a light blue here. Uh, I don't know how light it is actually. Okay, so let me, maybe these are some bluebells here. A lot of big, th this is a two millimeter paint pen, I believe. So it is really a nice, strong, in this case, dot the way that I'm using it. And it's a little, yeah, it's about the same value or similar value to that first green that I used, okay? So you see it like that, all right? Now those stand out a little bit, but I'm going to be using white over the top of it too. I need to wait for that to dry a little bit. So as that does that, I am going to bring in some additional foliage into here. Let me go grab that. Okay, I have a pine bow here. I'm gonna do it in stays on because I am now stamping over the top of alcohol inks in here. I just don't think the dye-based ink is going to adhere to it. You can see it's like, shiny kind of, uh, you know, um, applications of color. There might be some, um, you know, wax over the top of it too. So it stays on, you know, pretty much adheres to just about anything. Glass even. So just use your media. Now, I, I mean, I could have just stamped this in here from the beginning in dye based ink, but you know, if you don't do that and then you color in and then you want to go over the top of it, then use what's going to work. Okay. So um, in this case, it was, you know, water based to solvent based. Okay. It's like if you're painting a house, you know, you can start off with a water based, you know, paint. And then if you decide, oh, I want to go to the oil, you can use the oil over the water-based, right? You can't really use most um, water-based over oil, otherwise it's going to start peeling, okay? So just kind of um, think about, you know, keep in mind your sequencing uh, when you're doing things. Okay, see that right there? No, I'm not just doing the one. I'm going to be doing, you know, a few of these in here. I'll 
change the angle a little bit too, just so it's not so monotonous. Let's grab the other direction. I've designed this stamp where you can use uh, kind of this part this that's coming out this way, but these parts right here are equally as useful. Maybe I already have this one kind of hanging down like that, actually in a couple spots, so maybe we'll just go like this with the heel of it and I'll utilize those um, sections it's kind of just kind of to frame the piece off um, nicely Okay, so I have that kind of capped off the top a little. I don't mind another one coming in like this in here, maybe. Yeah, actually, maybe not. I, well, actually, I'm going to have it coming from behind this one. So I'll mask this off and I'll layer that in there. Kind of from in back of one and in front of the other. I'm not pressing down too hard. I'm just kind of using a little bit of leverage on here. waiting for the ink to dry a little bit. Or, I don't know, to start setting up a little bit more. All right, this is gonna, it's coming up from behind. I think that looks pretty cool like that. I don't know if I've used it so kind of low in the, uh, the tree trunks before. I usually have it coming from above, but I think these larger ones, I don't know, it might work on the smaller one too, but the larger ones especially, I think that's uh, pretty beneficial like that. Okay, my juniper. I haven't used this one in a little bit, but I really like the way it looks. Okay, that didn't adhere to that at all. I think that wax is uh, keeping my uh, impressions from uh, transferring in some, at least in some parts, but no big deal. Okay, let's try it down here. I got a lot of wax down there. Let's see how that goes. Well, that did. 
worked out pretty good. It might be the alcohol in conjunction with that. But I mean, you know, I don't know. It looks pretty good. I can just notice that, you know, in the really fine areas, if I look at it carefully, it's like, oh, okay, it didn't transfer as quite as much. Okay, now as I've been doing those other things, I think the blue and the greens have dried in here adequately. So let's go on with the white. If I went over it with the white, I'd be getting, you know, blue paint, blue wet paint all up into my, uh, my pen here, so. Allow things to dry and, you know, you shouldn't have to uh, worry about, uh, you know, too much. So these acrylic pens, you know, they, they're kind of designed to dry uh, rel relatively quick. Okay, let me see. Did I shake this up? Okay, this is going to represent kind of little you know, white flowers too, but maybe as much about lighting as anything. Rooms here. I'm gonna put a little bit of a uh, highlighting on a couple of the parts of the trees, maybe. Kind of a lighter edge. a little bit of highlights. I don't know if you can see that in there. Here, I'll put a little bit of a darker spot here. Hopefully that has kind of a nice, kind of welcoming, oh, kind of shimmer to it. Okay. Now, what to put into that background? We have this perfect little space here for um, some kind of subject matter. Uh, let me go look and see what we want to uh, see what I want to add into that uh, area. All right, I have this one stamp called horseback. Let's do it in the stays on just so it'll dry faster. As I want to put in uh, some uh, white pigment ink to just kind of finish this piece off. Just enough space for this uh, stamp right between our uh, opening. If you have some kind of subject matter um, that you're definitely wanting to add into a piece, you know, and you have it in mind before you start the scene, then, you know, just kind of leave space accordingly, you know, rather than kind of having it as a second thought um, here. But, you know, with stamps, Gabe stamps, you can work it either way. It can be a secondary kind of thought, you know, to add something in, like at the last minute if you want to, because I have these um, different stamps uh, at different sizes, and there's, you know, I don't know, we have a lot of choices. Okay, so um, let's add in a little bit of a kind of additional atmosphere into the scene, and we're almost done here. All right, so this is just some white 
pigment ink, okay? It's quite brilliant ink. It's a water-based ink and it dries pretty fast. All right, so let's go and I'll add it into this kind of ridge line. Oops, I don't want it over my trees right there. Here, <laughs> I'll just kind of wipe it off right there. My uh, white pigment ink pad was uh, wetter than I thought it was. Actually, let me squeeze off your cotton ball a little bit more narrow that way, okay? And let's add this chicken to see if that horse is nice and dry. I'm going to have that this lighting coming from uh, over that ridge there. So I'm not bringing in that white over the entire image. I have it like midway up or so and more around the base. It's like this fog and mist on the ground. Oops, I keep going over this tree here. It should work a little bit more vertical here with my application. Here we go. All right. I'll go like this. <laughs> and right here, we'll have some of this uh, mist or lighting kind of at the base of the uh, trees right here, too. So you kind of build it up where it's lighter and then you kind of creep it into those um, areas so you don't have this big blob here. It's kind of more, you're tapping this and then as it uh, gets drier on here, you're applying less ink so that you go into the darker areas with less ink. So wetter in the lighter area and drier in the darker areas. Does that make sense? So you really want to utilize, see, I still have plenty of ink on this, so I'm coming over into this tree right here and adding it down by the base here. So just be aware of how much ink you have on here. A lot of times we're used to kind of inking up and inking up and inking up, but you're usually not used to, um, in a lot of different styles of stamping and coloring, you're not used to um, going on with such a dry version of whatever media media you're using that's where people kind of go a little bit uh, nuts with this you know they're using used to seeing a thick saturation of something that they're using apply very quickly and not slowly like this and you know incrementally so you want to use a very low amount of it for control and then you get these like nice, uh, you know, very thin additions of white here, okay? Think about it, though. It's supposed to be like mist. So mist is very airy and uh, light. And think about it like, you know, you're applying a light, thin layer of mist. Okay, it's not like a big blob of it or something of that sort. So, you know, a little cotton ball for lightness in terms of application, and plus, it's a little bit dry too, or very dry. Think about like, you know, you're applying, uh, I don't know, if we were applying like some makeup or something like that. Um, and I always mention not like cold pack cream, like on a clown's face, you know, just, you know, a little bit of foundation or something like that. Okay, so let's put some of this up into, you know, some of these um, overhanging bows as well. This one kind of stamped out a little bit lighter to begin with, so I'm just kind of putting a little bit of that lighting on that bow there. So you don't have to cover up the whole thing, you can just cover up a part of it, and it looks like, you know, some cool lighting is hitting it. It doesn't, it makes it more kind of tactile too, don't you think? Having something that's kind of both soft and crisp up there. Plus it looks like just really cool lighting anyways. So things down here, just this mist and maybe up in here, these, some of these trees are being kind of bottom lit. You 
And I think that should do it. Well, I put a little bit more there. I thought that looks pretty cool. Uh, as this dries, it gets um, it dries a little bit more see through, so the white looks a little bit darker than what it is, uh, what it looks like uh, when freshly applied and wet. Okay, so what do you think? Skin tone markers. I think that made for a pretty rich, oh, kind of natural looking forest in there. So I think I found a pretty good set of uh, tones for things like wood um, and tree trunks and so on and so forth. I was looking at it before, you know, the, you know when I was looking up different um, types of um, sets in the past and I've seen these you know different types of skin tone um, sets in the past and um, I've thought about it but I, I don't know I didn't pull the trigger but I thought okay there's like multiple tones in there that can you know lend itself to a pretty rich surface in terms of uh, natural looking woods and I think when combined together, it worked out pretty well. It even looked fine when it kind of mixed with some of the dye-based black ink on there. I think it looks all the better for it. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Drop me a note if you have any questions about it. Or if you just like to make a comment, really support, help support the channel.